Welcome to the show. Today we're going to be talking about user interface, hereafter referred to as UI because user interface is a mouthful. And I'm not the fastest talker in the world. And words are important. So UI is the discussion today. UI refers to everything the player does to interact with the game. The controls, the HUD for heads-up displays in most games, menus, what have you. Everything the player does and gets feedback through, that's part of the user interface. And you know, the problem with a lot of user interface is if it's well designed, nobody notices and nobody cares because it's well designed and out of the way. Now, some other aspects of UI that I won't be discussing today, either because on PCs they're really customizable or simply because I don't have expertise in the field, are just control schemes and animation quality and well designed animations because. I'm not an animator, I can't really speak with authority on animation, and like I said, control schemes, especially on computers, they're so customizable at this point, any problems with them usually can get fixed. And also for a lot of games on consoles, the control schemes have become incredibly standardized for a reason. They're pretty well designed for the most part, so I don't really feel like that's something I need to really discuss other than mention in passing. Like, these are important things to remember that are a part of the UI, but are not really what I'm talking about today. I'm going to be talking about the graphical elements mostly because that's my main interest in user interface, as well as I think the one that has the most range of quality. You can have awful ones, and you can have amazing ones. And like I mentioned before, the amazing ones nobody ever talks about just because they are, in fact, amazing, and they're never in your way, and they're never hindering you. And that's what you want out of a user interface. You want it to be intuitive, and you want it to present all of your necessary information as clearly as humanly possible. And you want it to be unnoticed, because if people are noticing it, it's not doing its job. And then finally, one of the last really major requirements in my mind for a user interface is it fits the type of game it's implemented in. You don't want to have a horror game with a gigantic UI that takes up the entire screen all the time because that'll knock you out of the setting and the tone and everything because with a gigantic graphic in front of you at all times feeding you information, you're not going to pay attention to the rest of the game. And that's actually something I've noticed in games with mini-maps that I have a problem with is if there's a minimap, I focus almost entirely on the minimap and not at the great art direction or anything else in the world. I just focus on this little tiny corner of the screen to see exactly where I need to go instead of looking at where I'm actually going. So that's a, an example of something I actually dislike in games is having an, a real minimap. I'm perfectly fine if you want to give more situational awareness to a player but don't give them a mini-map that they can track all of their progress on because that'll th throw out a lot of the good art direction you have or even the good rest of your user interface that's helping guide the player because they have all of the information they need directly in this corner instead of actually paying attention to the rest of it. So that's something I think to keep in mind if you want to put a mini-map in is how, how much is it going to affect what people are going to look at? Because for me, in a third-person action game, if there's a mini-map, I look at the minimap more than I look at the actual game most of the time, which is unfortunate because, you know, a minimap's boring. It's static. It doesn't do anything exciting except move little pixels around versus the rest of the game, which is beautifully animated or very nice art direction or all of the above. And I miss a lot of that because of the minimap, and I just stare at the minimap. Now, that might be my fault, but really, I don't think you can say it's the player's fault with the UI because the designers have to really make the UI quality. And of course, that's what the video is going to talk about. One last thing about minimaps before we get to the rest of the video and the real heart of the discussion is that I'm specifically talking about them in action games and not RTSs or other slower paced games. Because something like StarCraft, which I will hopefully do a video on eventually, it needs its minimap. The game would not work without its minimap and the ability to instantly go to certain sections of the map to react to things. RTSs and a lot of other like top-down games really desperately need that sort of interaction and that sort of minimap because also the rest of the game is not focused on the minimap and you need to use the entire interface to play the game well. So the minimap in an RTS really is distinct from the kind of minimap I'm talking about which gives way too much information 
and really keeps my attention focused on it, that's not what's in an RTS. And I feel like that's something I should clear up now because I can see people yelling at me over, oh, StarCraft has a minimap. Do you hate StarCraft's UI? No, I love StarCraft's UI. And actually, be, I love it because it reminds me of Free Space's UI. And that was actually the thing that got me to buy the game was a review that said, this game's interface is heavily reminiscent of Free Space's interface. So that's something to keep in mind. And also I should mention, Free Space is my favorite game. So keep that in mind with really all the videos I do. Most of them in the background, you can always remind yourself that I am comparing everything to Free Space because it's my favorite game. And I think wearing your biases on your sleeve is important because that is a huge part of my perspective as a person in gaming is does it hold up to the game I praise every day for existing and the reason I'm here is actually Free Space 2. So another just quick thing is yes Free Space 2 is my favorite game. It's going to feature big in this video because I think it has one of the greatest user interfaces of all time and it's similar to StarCraft so keep that in mind too. To recap the qualities of user interfaces I think are necessary to just basic quality. I think they need to be intuitive. I think they need to present all of their information clearly. I think they need to be unintrusive. And I think they need to fit the type of game they're implemented in. So that's the basics. That's just basic usability. What makes a good user interface great? I'd say it's aesthetically pleasing without sacrificing any of your usability. So it's nice to look at in addition to being functional. That's important. And then it needs to fit the type of world you're in. So it needs to be stylized a little bit too. And that kind of goes with aesthetically pleasing. But I think it's, a, I think it's distinct just because you can have an aesthetically pleasing UI that doesn't fit the type of world it's in. Like, I haven't encountered many games that do this, but theoretically you could have a science fiction styled UI in a fantasy game. I haven't seen that a whole lot, but that's, if it works, you know, it's fine, but that's not great. You want the style of the UI to fit with the style of the game. So that does really go along with being aesthetically pleasing. And then the final thing I'd say that makes a great UI incredible is that it is completely encapsulated in the game's world. Nothing about the UI is outside of the game's world. All of the elements in it are, in fact, elements inside of the game's world, in some manner. As we transition more to free space and talking about free space's UI, I think it's important to discuss upfront why I love it so much and why I think its user interface is one of the best of all time. And it really boils down to just how clear everything is. For as much information as the game throws at you at any given time, it's always clear and nothing about the user interface tries to hide what's going on. Everything's color-coded. Unfortunately, I don't think the game still supports colorblind modes. I might be wrong about that. There might be something in the modified launcher that helps with that, but unfortunately the game relies on color-coding a lot of things to make it clear, so if you're colorblind, unfortunately the game is not set up properly, and I think that's a shame. But that's also showing the game's age. It's a 15-year-old game at this point. So anyways, back on topic. The user interface never gets outside of the world. Every screen in the game acts like it's a screen inside of the game's world. Whether or not it's expanded the proper way or whatever, that's beside the point. Every single screen looks like it's a screen in the game's world. Either it's a screen on a wall or it's a screen in front of you. Any of those work, you can think of them any way you want, but the point is none of the screens take you out of the world. They're all making you feel like you're in the world. The main menu itself makes you feel like you're in the world. It is a giant image of a hanger and you scroll over various elements of it and it tells you what's there and then you click on it and it takes you to another area. That is great. I love that because you feel like you're in the game the minute you open it. It just throws you in and says, all right, you're a pilot, go for it. So, and, and I mean, that's something space combat games have always done is have that style of UI that you're just a pilot sitting on this ship. 
that's something they've done well, and that's actually going back to StarCraft and Free Space having parallels. StarCraft does the same thing. It's obviously much prettier to look at at this point because it's not a 15-year-old game, but it's the same basic idea of you get a feel of the world through the menus and th just through the interface you get a feel of the world and then something else I think Free Space does really well that also parallels what StarCraft does really well is it's not cluttered as much information as Free Space is throwing at you nothing there is overwhelming because of how clear it's presented and how every single element on the screen serves a purpose and that's something I think a lot of games need to realize about really good UI design is everything on the screen should have a place. There shouldn't be anything there that's just for the sake of looking cool. So for example, if you look at Free Space's HUD when it gets into the game, you know, you'll see this circle in the middle of the screen. Unfortunately, one of the artifacts of it being such an old game is the HUD doesn't scale properly, so there's some issues with that. But when the game came out, the circular part of the HUD itself w was useful. It would tell you exactly where you were able to lock missiles. Unfortunately, now it is descaled a little bit and it's smaller than it should be. But the idea was there. When it came out, it worked properly. So even the stylized look of this circular centerpiece of the HUD that's theoretically blocking your view is serving an incredibly important purpose it serves as a tool to help you target missiles and that's like everything on free spaces hud everything there is giving you information and it's always grouped in proportion to how important it is immediately so everything that's really important is at the center of the screen usually in this vertical third center so that's your hull integrity where you can lock missiles, your weapon energy, your afterburner energy, your hull and in your shield integrity, I'm sorry, and your enemy shield integrity. That's all the vital, vital information. Then on the sides, you have stuff like your objectives, your escort list for important ships, you have your power settings for your ship, you have your um, detailed target data. And actually also in the center, very center of the screen, is the target's hull integrity, just a number with each shield quadrant on it. That's in the center of the screen. So you don't have to look anywhere to see the basic status of your target, which is, I think, great because you don't want to have to look in some place kind of off to the side and take away your um, focus from what you're doing. So the game actually throws like three or four different ways at least to see the whole integrity of your target, which is great because that's something important. That is one of the most important things in the game. So as cluttered as Free Space's UI looks at the outset, at least what I found when I started playing it back in elementary school was it wasn't overwhelming at all. Everything there seemed reasonable. Everything there served a purpose. So if an elementary school kid can figure it out pretty easily, I think that's pretty good design. Because while I think to some people it might look daunting, it's not because of how well laid out it is and how everything on screen is there to help you. And that's, you know, when I look at a lot of science fiction games, they run into the problem of they stylize their UI far too much. In this game, it I think it's not the prettiest to look at HUD, and I mean, to me, most of the beauty comes from just how clear everything is and how crisp it is and just how easy the game makes it for me to see everything I need to. So, and I mean, that's me being a person interested in user interface. But I think there is a beauty in how simple it is for how much information free space throws at you. It never is trying to hinder you or trying to look cool in place of looking functional. And that's something a lot of older space combat games, I think, do really well is the idea that all of your information is vital and the entire interface is designed to help you. Now, speaking of incredibly stylized user interfaces, you might have noticed the Dead Space clip I have at the very beginning of the video. Now, I put Dead Space in here not only because I could make a cutesy connection between Free Space and Dead Space having somewhat similar titles, 
but also because Dead Space follows the exact same theory behind its UI that Free Space does, in that everything in Dead Space's UI is inside of the world and inside of the Dead Space universe. And it was far clearer about it than I think Free Space ever would be without me coming out and saying it, because every element in Dead Space's UI, including the menus, looks like it's being projected off of the main character, or is in some way connected to a character in the game through their suit. Whereas Free Space has to deal with menus and make the menus feel like they're in fact menus on a screen in the world, and I think Free Space does it incredibly well, and that's why I love it, but Dead Space is an incredibly stylized user interface. And I think it's a great example of a stylized UI that doesn't let its stylization get in the way of its functionality. Because, as I mentioned before with me talking about Free Space, a lot of sci-fi games, and a lot of games in general, try and make their user interface look really nice, and they sacrifice a lot of the quality of information that the user interface can even get you, because they want to look cool, and they add a bunch of unnecessary elements. Well, Dead Space not only is it a minimalistic UI in general, nothing about it looks unfunctional because it's all attached somehow to the main character. Now the main menu and the pause menu, not so much, but every other menu in the game, those all connect to the main character. Every single one of those is being projected off of the character or is on the character's back so the camera can see it most of the time. That is gorgeous for me to look at. And I think a lot of games should take that into account when they're designing their UI is, can we integrate this better into our character and into our universe? Because, I mean, I look at Dead Space and I see one of the best stylized user interfaces of all time. Everything on screen serves a purpose, and yet it all looks like it should be there. Even the button prompts, as funny as that sounds, even the quick time event button prompts, they don't feel that out of place. I mean, there's still a button prompt, but they're being projected off of Isaac's back. So it's not like he's going to see it. And it's it's there for us, the player, but it doesn't feel incredibly breaking of the immersion just because it's still acting the same as all of the other elements. It's not popping up in the middle of the screen. No, it's being projected off of the character. Even though Dead Space chooses to project all of its information and menus off of Isaac, it doesn't let that get in the way of usability, as I've said before. And I think the really important thing to look at when you look at Dead Space's UI is, even though it stylizes its menus, it doesn't let that get in the way of your ability to read them or scroll through them and quickly get information, like some other games I can think of, where Dead Space has a tabbed menu system, but the tabs are organized properly, you have your inventory tab, you have your log tab, and you have your objective tab. And that's it. It's not trying to do three things at once within one tab. It has all of your resources in one tab, and then it has another tab of just all the stuff you've picked up. And there's another tab for what you're supposed to be doing. Now the important one's the inventory, and it organizes it well. It's a grid, and then on the sides it has how much money you have, how many um, power nodes you have, what have you. And really, other than that, it doesn't clutter the interface at all. And that echoes what I said about Free Space's UI, which is everything in it should be there for a reason, and Dead Space does that well. Everything in Dead Space's UI is there to help you. It's throwing a lot less information at you all at once simply because of the genre. It's a horror action game, and it doesn't need to throw as much information at you all at once but the information it needs to give you is presented as clearly as possible. For example, your health is always on screen or almost always on screen, and your ammo is almost always there if you need it to be there. And it's, it's a really good example of how you can unclutter a UI even more than you need to, because your ammo counter is not always available. You have to aim to see your ammo counter or bring up a menu to show how much ammo total you have. And, you know, that's kind of a take-it-or-leave-it thing with Dead Space. I think it's fine. I think it serves the genre it's in incredibly well, and I think it makes it feel more like a horror game because you don't have access to all of your information all the time. And that's that goes back to that really early point I made about designing the UI for the type of game you're making. 
FreeSpace's UI is throwing a lot of information at you, and that's because FreeSpace has to do that. To be able to play FreeSpace properly, you need a ton of information all at once, all the time. Whereas in Dead Space, I think if you gave it FreeSpace's UI, the game would break. It would be horrible. You'd have all these UI elements cluttering your view, a lot of them wouldn't even need to be there, and it just wouldn't help the tone of the game or the atmosphere. Similarly, if you put Dead Space's UI in free space, that game just wouldn't work at all. You wouldn't have access to anywhere near enough information, and it would probably look kind of funny and just overall not fit. So really the biggest takeaway, I think, is you want to make a clear user interface that's intuitive and really just try and get it as close to being in-universe as possible. Because if you can get the personality of the game immediately through the interface, that will help you sell the idea that you are in a world and you're experiencing the world. Because everything is helping you. And that's, I think, really the point of most of the videos I make, is just trying to look at what games can do to help them make you immersed. That was what the Death Mechanic video was about, and that's what this video is about. It's about designing your UI to not feel like a UI. It should feel like it's something in the world that is that someone in the world would use. And these are two great examples. There's also StarCraft, as I mentioned, which is really just an extension of what I talked about with free space. It's a slightly different genre, but it uses the same principles and the same design choices to get a lot of information across all at once effectively and clearly. And and that's really the other reason I was talking so much about free space is it's a great example of how to give a ton of information to the player without it overwhelming them or cluttering up the screen too much. Because it was designed in such a way to give you all the information and to help you where everything served a purpose. And that's something else I think just to take away for game design in general is everything you put in your game should serve a purpose. And that is doubly true for your user interface because if your user interface is cluttered and barely usable, people will notice and they'll complain about it and it will show that you did not do your job well enough to hide your UI. Now. The flip side of that is, if you design your UI well enough, nobody's going to notice because you did it so well, It no one will ever pay attention to it because they're getting all of the information they need at the right times perfectly. So that's the flip side where if you design a good UI, you won't get noticed for it because you did your job well. And, you know, this video hopefully will get a few more people to notice good UIs just because, you know, I think it is important to look at them. and. We don't, I think, give enough credit to good UIs simply because we don't take the time to notice them. And they are something you have to notice and you have to look for because if you just play a game, you're not going to notice a good UI because it's doing its job, like I've said. So hopefully this video will let some of you thank the UI engineers and designers. And that's what I'm trying to do with this is thank all those involved in Free Space's UI design, in Dead Space's UI, and even though I didn't talk too much about StarCraft in StarCraft's UI because it's a big game that throws a lot of information to you and I think it does a brilliant job of it. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Please give me feedback on what I can do better and catch you guys later.